windy Sunday morning. So our, our beautiful, yes. The um, couple mans are going to be leading us in worship this morning. We um, and it, so we have 17 confirmands, so we've got them kind of spread out in between two services. And uh, in the next service, there's going to be a bunch of them doing chimes. And um, in this service, we're all, all going to be doing all the liturgy and stuff. And so I hope you enjoy the fact that 17 confirmands will be voted in as new members of our church, as long as a, as well as with a baptism this morning, are going to be leading us in worship. With that being said, let's worship the Lord. Good morning. My name is Donovan Cup. Jesus declares the fulfillment of God's covenant, and the disciples are helped to understand the words of Scripture. The lame walk, sins are forgiven, the hungry are fed, the promise of wholeness is in Christ, cleansing Scripture. The claim, oh, therefore, since we too believe, we are empowered to perform acts of compassion of our brokenness. Oh, oh my. Compassion and mercy ministering to others in the name of Christ, who died that all may live. Please join us in the call to worship. Okay. Oh, that's right. We had a change in that. My, my apologies. There was a change in the program, and it's my apologies. There is him. Please join. Please stand and sing with us hymn number 233. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, Seated. Hello, I am Kai. 
God hears our praises. God has set us apart and hears us when we call. God is gracious to us and accepts all of our efforts. Let us, let us worship the Lord. We continue with our worship this morning by knowing that God has given us that all that we should be called, all that we need to be called the children of God. Everyone whose hope is in God are made pure just as God is made pure. What God foretold by the mouths of the prophets, God fulfilled. God is righteous, and we are made righteous in God through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Please stand, greet your neighbor, knowing that you are free and forgiven people of God. Show them a way. Those on the internet, please hit us up. This morning, as part of our um, service of confirmation and as our time for young disciples, for all of the young worshipers who are worshiping with us in person and online, we are celebrating the sacrament of baptism. Two of our confirmands who have gone through the process together with the rest of our 17 youth this um, season of confirmation have um, also expressed a desire to be baptized. And while one will be baptized at a later date in a private service, sacrament service with their family, we will be baptizing Donovan, Kai, I'm sorry. We will be baptizing Kai this morning. And so at this time, I would invite Pastor Robert to join me at the baptism font and I would call Kai forward. We celebrate the, the sacrament of baptism as an outward sign of an inward grace of God. God loves us and chooses each one of us long before we even know what that means. Why don't you stand beside me? I feel like you stand by yourself down there. Come. <laughs> I've known Kai a long time. He's been around for a while, and it's good to see him getting baptized. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. When we baptize, we recognize a person as a beloved child of God, promise to walk beside them on their journey of faith, and we welcome them into our community, the church. Let us remember with joy our baptism as we celebrate the sacrament today. On behalf of the session, I present Kai to receive the sacrament of baptism. So Kai, I'm going to ask you a few questions here, okay? Or Melanie's going to ask you. Hi, do you come here today to worship desiring to be baptized, do you? Yes. And relying on God's grace, do you promise in word and in deed to be faithful to the example and the call of Christ in your life? Yes. And as God embraces you within the covenant, I ask you to reject sin, to profess faith in Christ, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin? Do you renounce evil and its power in the world? Yes. And do you turn to Christ, accept him as your Lord and your Savior, Savior, and trusting in him and his grace and love? And will you be Christ's faithful disciples, faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Yes. Wonderful. Congregation, 
and I'm going to ask you to join me. And your answers will be, you get a cheat sheet. Very simple. We do. <laughs> Got it? All right. <laughs> yeah, write that down. Our Lord Jesus Christ commissioned us to teach those who are baptized. Do you, congregation, speaking for the whole church, promise to make this commitment to nurture and form the faith of Kai in Christ? Do you? Amen. And do you promise to do our part to live the good news of the gospel alongside Kai, to help him to know that all that Christ commands, to surround him with our love and by our fellowship, to strengthen his life and his tie with the household of God? Do you? And I have some questions for the youngest disciples of the congregation. So if you are a young worshiper with us, these questions are for you. And they're going to be simple. Your answers are, we will and we do. Will you be a good friend to Kai? Helping him when he is confused or uncertain. Encouraging him when he is afraid or sad. Showing him where things are when he is lost. Will you? And do you promise to walk beside him, to love him, and to care for him just like he was one of your own brothers? Do you? Yes. Wonderful. Let us pray together. Oh God, your Holy Spirit is a constant presence in our hearts, our minds, and all around us. We pray that you will stir up these waters of baptism, reminding us all of our own baptism covenants that were made for us as young children or made by us as older people. Bless Kai on this day as he is acknowledged as your child from before his birth to long after he is dead, that you hold his life and all of our lives in the palm of your hand. And bless us all as we acknowledge today Kai's part of the body of Christ, his presence as one of us in this communion of faith. Amen. Kai, I'd ask you to just kneel or couch down close to the water for me. There you go. You can, you can just sit around for a second. Kai, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, mother and father of us all. Kai, son of God, would you please stand? You have been claimed by the Holy Spirit, sealed and marked as Christ's own forever. We have been welcoming you into our family of faith from the very first day you arrived here. To your parents and grandparents and family, both biological and in the spirit of God, I charge you all now that even as you trust in God's claim on Kai's life, you do all that you can to help him fulfill the promises made today by you and by all of you at this baptism. And may God bless you always. Amen. Now we are going to um, invite our confirmands to join the church and celebrate with them. Before we start this, I want to again say that we are here to welcome a class of 17 confirmands into our CPC family of faith. That is a huge amount of children, and we are so proud and blessed that they are here. We wouldn't have been able to do this without Paula Renfro, who is sitting on the front of the front of the pew, and if she would stand up and kind of wave at everyone. Yes. She has taught, um, taught our confirmands through taking them through 10 separate lessons about um, the church and the Presbyterian faith, and we 
could not do this without her. She's fabulous. Um, and again, we, we do have 17 compromands, but because of COVID protocols, we are joining them in two separate services. Because if we had 17 compromands, 17 members, our mentors, 34 parents and siblings, we'd be at capacity. So um, I'm going to call out all of the names of the compromands and their mentors that um, are joining. I would like the mentors that are here to please stand where you are so that you can be recognized because this journey is not one, again, that our compromands have taken alone. And I'm going to ask the compromands to come up. Spread out along the front, face the congregation, and bring your green sheet with you, okay? So, we have Sam Brinkley, whose mentor was Mike Little. Luke Carley, whose mentor was Frank Tappan. Alex Daniel, whose mentor was Brooks Ann Meyerdirks. Chloe Daniel, whose mentor was Tracy Kilby. Chad Himes, whose mentor was Jim Jordan. Max Jordan, whose mentor was Eric Wild. Josiah Kilby, whose mentor was Jeff White. Donovan Kopp, whose mentor was Rob Carley. Alyssa Kramer, whose mentor was Lisa Harold. Zahara McLeod, whose mentor was Christy Jo Walls. Kendall McCrary, whose mentor was Shelley Speed. Austin Moore, whose mentor was Drew Robertson. Reed Steinmeier, whose mentor was Mike Davis. Kai Stubbs, whose mentor was Andrew McCrary. Raven Taylor, whose mentor was Mary Tappan, Cadence Walls, whose mentor was Annie Meyerdirks, and Lauren Wilde, whose mentor was Jen Birchfield. And they are presented by the session for the reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant. They now desire to profess their faith publicly and to accept greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission in the world. Confirmands, we rejoice that you now desire to declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry. In baptism, you were joined to Christ and made members of his body. In the communion and the people of God, you have learned of God's purpose for you and for all of creation. You have been nurtured at the table of our Lord and called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear these words from Holy Scripture. You are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your own light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Now, confirmands, as you publicly declare your faith, I ask you to answer these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Who is your Lord and Savior? And will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word and showing his love? And will you devote yourself to the church's teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers? As a community of faith, let us stand and affirm our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. You have this on an insert that's in your bulletin. The names of the Confirmand are on one side and the Apostles' Creed is on the other. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Not you. Not you guys. Them. Not them, you either. Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. Renew in these students of faith the covenant you made in their baptism. Continue the good work you have begun in them. Send them forth in the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, in a typical year, at this point in the confirmation service, we would be asking all of those who have been elders, deacons, officers of the church, anyone who has been a mentor or a close person on the walk of faith of any of these young people in their lives to come forward and lay hands upon them. Now, this is not a typical year. And so unfortunately, we cannot do that physically, but we are going to do it in a more virtual way. So all of the confirmands, I invite you to stand with your heads bowed and your hands upward facing toward the congregation. You can just hold your papers in your hands if you need to, that's totally fine too. And then members of the congregation, I will invite you to hold up your hands to lay the energy of your hands upon them virtually as we say these words. O oh God of all creation, Uphold Sam and Luke, Alex and Chloe, Chad, Max, Josiah, Donovan, Alyssa, Zahara, Kendall, Austin, Reed, Kai, Raven, Cadence, and Lauren, by your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of your joy and your presence, both now and forevermore. May they remember their baptism and be thankful, knowing that your Holy Spirit is at work within them. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Friends, by professing your faith publicly, you've expressed your intention to grow in the covenant of God made with you in your baptism. We welcome all of you into the fellowship of the Church of Jesus Christ. And may the, may the Spirit continue to strengthen and sustain you in the worship and mission we share with each other. We welcome you into the members of the Church of Jesus Christ. Now, as the confirmands are returning to their seats, I want to just remind you and let you know that they will be outside at the end of worship this morning so that you may greet them and welcome them into the family of faith in person at a distance. Welcome, all of you, to our community. I keep blaming my paper down. I can't remember I leave my paper. Okay. There we go. All right. I know that uh, Kai will not forget that baptism at all okay <laughs> where's the jacket to stay wet to stay dry out of the rain Melanie comes up here and just douses him with water okay you're yeah. welcome <laughs> you're welcome yeah. exactly <laughs> so now it's time to go to god with our tithes and our offerings and all the ways that you support this church we give you thanks it is if you'll find in your bulletins i was kind of uh the uh sheet i believe for beam again this week as beam is our blue bin mission oh it's in the back okay um, for those who love the support beam, I, I was very surprised this week. The blue bin is already full. That's okay. We, we're, we will collect it and take it down to beam this week. But you'll find a list in the back and on our Facebook page for uh, supporting beam and all the different missions that we do. There's a list out there. So while you're out and about, you can pick up some stuff for beam, bring it up to the church, drop it off in the front office, and we'll make sure that they get it. All the ways that you support this church, we give you thanks for all, all the ways that you do. Let us pray. Giver of, giver of eternal gladness, fountain of life from whom flow endless blessings, all that we have is a gift of your endless love. Accept now our offerings of thanksgiving, symbols of our responses to Christ's sacrifice for us. Use our gifts to spread the good news of repentance and forgiveness of sins. May they bring times of refreshment as a result of Christ's presence. 
Amen. 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 My name is Kenna McCray, and I'll be reading Acts 4, 5 through 12. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if there are questioned today because of the good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that you rejected by you. The builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation in no one else, for there is no other name heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. I agree. I think that does deserve applause. That's a hard thing to do. <laughs> it is hard to get up here and stand in front of people and say things out loud sometimes, especially into a microphone. Today's second reading comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, and it says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember that I am with you always, 
even to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The writer Steve Garnis Holmes has this to say about baptism and Pentecost in his poem called Burning Embers. We breathe in, we breathe out, we breathe fire, the making of stars, the winds of creation. We breathe a word that goes out and lays hands upon the people to heal and to bless. We breathe God in. We breathe God out. We speak grace in tongues that we cannot know. Look at us, walking around, glowing embers. Have you ever tried to reignite a campfire when it is almost out? The coals and embers are there just glowing without any flames. What do you do to bring it back to life? What do you do to bring it back to life? You breathe on it. And our story this morning from Matthew's Gospel is one that one of the many that took place in those wild and bewildering days after the death and resurrection of Christ, the glorious event that we just celebrated a couple of weekends ago. But in this moment, the disciples that went up to that mountain that day, they were not burning bright with the flames of God. They were barely glowing embers. They were burnt out they were spent, they were at a loss after all they had been through and all they had witnessed. They were uncertain and afraid and tired from being brought up before the authorities, being questioned, being threatened. Some were afraid, many were doubting, and all of them were feeling uncertain. They had no idea what would be next for them, but these words that Jesus gave them upon the mountain, kindled something within them that would begin to glow. Just waiting for the moment when the Holy Spirit would come to them and breathe those embers into fire. This year, as students and mentors and teachers have moved through confirmation, some of them have spent time talking about doubt. Each one of our confirmation students in preparation for this day has, in one way or another, acknowledged uncertainty and wrestled with their own questions about what it is they truly believe and whether or not they can always say with complete certainty that they agree with every single doctrine that we confirm and affirm as Christians and as Presbyterians. The journey of following Christ is uncertain and sometimes confusing. Yet as we take part in this process together, we stand, what stands out in my mind is the willingness of these young people, along with their mentors and their teachers, raised within a community of faith, for them to be in that space of not knowing, of confusion, of doubt, and for them to still remain faithful enough to the process, faithful enough to the journey, to stand before all of us today and profess their abiding faith in God, their abiding commitment to this community and the church. The writer of our lesson from the end of Matthew's Gospel has a similar message. You see, this story that we heard this morning does not end with a scene that is neat and wrapped up, where everyone understands what they are supposed to do and then confidently charge out to carry out their task. Scholar Eric Barreto reminds us that for these particular disciples in Matthew's Gospel, faith and certainty are not the same thing. Even at this critical moment, even at the feet of the risen Christ, Barreto says, faithfulness is obedience to Jesus even in the midst of our doubts. Even though some are unsure, they all still come to the mountain as Jesus commanded them. Our young people have been led here today through a process of learning 
and of questioning, guided by teacher, teachers and mentors and by the call of the Spirit. And a few of them have chosen passages of scripture to share with the congregation this morning. These verses express something that they hold as a guide for this moment and time along their journey. I invite you to listen now for the word of God shared by our confirmation students, Chloe and Donovan. Chloe, please come forward. Good, good morning, everyone. My name is Chloe Daniel. I'm reading a verse from the Bible that has meant a lot to me through my journey of faith. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 7, which states, Nothing can defeat you because God is with you. This verse is very special to me because it tells us that no matter what you're going through, you're not alone. God is always with you, and he can get you through anything, even if you feel so hopeless. I will always think about this verse whenever I'm struggling, and I will always take comfort in it. Thank you, Chloe. Donovan, I invite you to come forward. Oh. Good morning. I'm Donovan. Oh, my bad. And I'm reading a verse from Psalms 25, and it says, To thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in thee I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. And this verse means a lot to me because it's like your enemies and people who try to put you down, like you should be better than them and like succeed and not listen to them and not let them put you down. Yep. Thank you, Donovan. These young people who you've heard from this morning, along with all of the others who have been together with them in confirmation over these last several months, they have explored, they have wrestled, and they have challenged the faith of their childhoods. And if they do still have lingering questions or any kind of uncertainty about what they believe, I get the feeling that they are not alone. In fact, I want to try just a little experiment for the benefit of our confirmation students this morning. By a show of hands, how many of us in this congregation have wrestled or questioned or challenged the doctrines and beliefs that we grew up with or the ones of the church we belong to now at any point in our lives? Confirmands. You are in very good company. <laughs> the fact that we keep coming back, the fact that we continue to commit to this journey, even as we question, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is what we celebrate every time we welcome another class of confirmands into the next part of their journey of faith. There may be times when we feel like we are barely glowing embers, but the Spirit of God already burns within each one of us. It is this Spirit that calls us to go and make disciples, that's true, but also to go and be disciples ourselves, worshiping God, following the example of Christ, and listening even in the midst of our doubts, even when we do not know what to do, for God's call to us to be people of faith rather than people of certainty. We are sent into the world to make disciples by how we live, bringing all that we are, our belief, our passions, our fears, and our hopes, and our doubts with us as we follow Christ. This is our journey. This is our calling. This is our life together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, you can find the next hymn for this morning in your as an insert. Uh, and it is entitled The Summons. Confirmands. 
I invite you at some point to read the words of this hymn, as it may help you in your journey, and it can help all of us in our journey. We will be singing verses 1 through 4. This is Zahara. She's going to be assisting me as we go to God in prayer this morning. But uh, yeah, give him a wave. There you go. And also the confirmands are going to be lining up just outside the church in the, in the front as you go out. And you're welcome to give them a fist bump and welcome them to the family of faith. I'm very proud of our confirmand class. Again, 17 of them. Um, I've talked to a lot of people over this process the last few months, and they were blown away. As a matter of fact, I was with some of my uh, disaster assistance folks uh, from all over the country. I went to a funeral a few weeks ago. And they ask how things are with the church, like we all do with everybody's church. And when I said we have a confirmation class of 17 going through it, they were totally blown away. None of them, okay, at a big funeral had it from their church, had a confirmation class nearly the size and stuff. And th again, this is a testimony to our, to our church and to the strength that we have as, from you guys as for what we do around here. We always reach out to the, our, our families, to our friends in the community, lifting them up in prayer. And a few, ones, a few updates that we have for the week um, is we remember Brigetta, who was separated from her family and is in failing health. For Yakara, who was in the hospital fighting COVID. We give thanks for all these cover men who have joined our family of faith this morning. And um, um, also remember the children's family as um, they mourn the loss of their grandfather and the husband and their dad. There are these prayer requests, all the prayers we can, uh, have are in the back if you want a, a hard copy and join us in prayer each week as we lift these, uh, lift these folks up. And then if you, don't want, if you forget to pick up a hard copy, you're welcome to uh, email uh, Melissa or myself, and we'll be happy to send that to you. Let's go to God in prayer. 
God of the universe and all of that, all that dwells in it, great is your name, Jesus, whom you wrote, right, rise from the dead, wa watches over us as the great shepherd. Your word says that you res restore our souls. Lead us beside still waters, anoint our heads with oil, and pre prepare a table of goodness for us when we face life's enemies. It's with these words of comfort that we bring our prayers before before you. Hear us as we lift up to you our prayers. Gracious God, we'll hold before you again, Brigetta, Yakara, and we ask that you be a source of strength for them, a source of comfort and a source of healing. We ask that you comfort the children's family in their loss. Bring them peace, bring them comfort and strength to face the days ahead. And for all the compromands that are joining this morning, gracious God, always remind them that no matter where they are, you are right there with them. In the hallways at school, when they're with their friends, when they're out and about in the community, and some, when they grow, old, grow older and go away, you're still right there with them. And you are preparing a table before them. You anoint their head with oil. You prepare the way for them. But remind them, O oh God, that wherever they arrive to, wherever life's journey takes them, you've gone ahead of them, and you're waiting on them to get there with you. Remind them, give them these words, all the days of their life is our prayer. Help us as a community of faith uphold these, these, these compromands. When we see them in the community around us, remind us, O oh God, to go up to them and congratulate them for being a member of our church and you remember what they did. And just give them words of comfort. Helping them along life's journey. Gracious God, there are many that are on our hearts. We, put, we lift up those who are facing medical challenges and with cancer. And we ask that you be a source of strength and healing for them as well. For those who are having surgery or recovering for surgery, we pray for a speedy and complete recovery. For those who are struggling or in need of peace, we call on the Prince of Peace, our Prince of Peace, to be a source of peace for them as well. And as we stand before your throne of grace to find help in time of need, Holy God, we know that there are many that are on our heart that we didn't lift up to you this morning. So in silence we stand before you and we hold these up to you now. Leads us in, leads us in the Lord's prayer, saying, "We, Our, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom." and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Zahara and Chloe, Kendall, Donovan, and Kai, we are so glad that you are part of our family. Amen. Amen. Good job. And as you go out into the world to love and serve the Lord, as we all go out into this world to love and serve the Lord. May you know that the love of God surrounds you, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ fills you up, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit connects you to everyone here and all of those who are a part of the family of God, wherever you or they may be. Amen. Amen. Amen.